tell you what, man, these rotaries, it just gives you, it's like therapy. You know how people go see their doctors and shrinks or whatever they do? I said, mate, if they had rotaries in their life, they would have no, no need. Without doubt, the RX4 Coupe is the muscle car of the early Mazda generation, and today we're gonna to check out one of Melbourne's finest. Released in 1973, the Mazda RX4 was a larger platform than the previous models it replaced, and was available in a coupe, sedan, and wagon variants. Power initially came from a 12A two rotor before the bigger displacement 13B engine was introduced. Good to see you again, Luke. <laughs> None of day in paradise. You'd, you'd be struggling to uh, fit in an you know R100, wouldn't you? Yeah, RX2. I love the yeah. RX2s. They're a bit tight. They're a bit tight. You know what? My legs hit it because of my size. Look at the size of me. I'm like a bulldozer. It's good. The RX4 is actually a bigger, bigger car, a bit more yeah. comfort. When you turn up today, Dunch, in this RX4, I have to say, I reckon, I don't reckon there is a better sounding street engine in the world than the 20B. Thank you very much, bro. I really yeah. appreciate that very much. I can see why you've gone with it. But when I first saw it, it had a 13B turbo and the engine bay was just as nice. Yeah, it was good. Look, the setup I had in it was probably about 10 years I had it going for 13B. And then we like done some modifications, done a few other things to it slowly, slowly. And then come to a time where I thought, you know what, it's time to go 20B. Yeah, it's what you always wanted. Always wanted a 20B, always. I remember one bloke in the area, uh, one of the boys, his older brother had a 20B and ever since I was a kid, I'd hear this RX-7 yeah, yeah. coming on, boosting the 20B and I was like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's been good, but man, I've loved this car. I, since I've built it, like I said, I've done in, in seven months, eight months, well, how long's it been since I had the car? February, I got it on the road. So since February, now it's November, I've done three and a half thousand Ks. Yeah, that's not bad in a, in a weekender car. Any chance I jump in at nice weather. Yeah. And it's, it, it's... Love it. The 20Bs just have so much more torque. Completely, they, they, you just feel it coming yeah. on straight away. But yeah, 16 years I've had this car for. And it comes on like, Easy. Nice. Yeah. You can't beat that 20B sound. It sounds awesome, mate. Oh, I love it. Love it. So is this your first foray into the Mazda Rotary world, or have you had other ones? Because most people don't just start with a 20B. No, well, my first car I ever bought when I was 17 years old was um, a Mazda 808 13B Turbo. Yeah, okay. So I bought that. I remember I was 17. I started working at 16. I saved up money. And uh, it was a guy selling it in Brooklyn, just up the road. Had plastic on the door trims, had a top mount. It was just a full standard oh, original yeah. hubcaps. And yeah, that was my first car that I bought. And that was, mate, I was gone. Hook, yeah, line and sinker, mate, I was hooked. Yeah. My brother was a big rotary person too. So he got me into the whole rotary scene. I've been stuck to the rotary scenes of my whole life. Yeah, yeah. Love it, love it. Yeah, did you buy this car like restored or have you, tell us a bit how it started with this one. Was it a, did you buy it as a bit of a junker or was it half built or? It, well, look, the car was, it was painted, but it was like a bit of a rough paint job. Yeah. Uh, it was but painted. Not, not this color? Not this color, it used to be blue. Yeah. So when I bought it, it had a standard 13 mb turbo set up, just full standard turbo running gear. You know, back yeah. in the day you drop it off, A grand gets your full standard <laughs> set up. Yeah. It was one of those setups, drive in, drive out, but it had no interior. It had, the car had a canary at the time, so I bought it and then slowly, slowly just had to put the interior in it, but I put standard interior in it. So then I ended up putting a T466 on it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a registered. Very popular turbo back, back oh, then. Oh mate, it was yeah. like the best thing in the world. Yeah. You know, you run a nine second pass yeah. with the T466 yeah. and everyone wanted them. And as you know, as cars, you, evolve. you, do, you evolve. You think you just re, uh, pull it apart and give it a quick a spray job and here we are today. Yeah. Why don't you pop the bonus and show us the business end? Yeah, done. Doesn't get much better than that. So I ended up polishing it all up, man, and um, it is a bit of a mission to keep clean. Yeah, I could imagine. But if you maintain it, look after it every time you drive it, give it a quick wipe, 
it just looks good. Look, I'm probably from the old school generation where chrome was like the best thing ever. A lot of people are doing black these days, but I thought, you know what? I wanted to go the chrome theme. And because it was really good with the with the bill of plates, massive credit to Simon with the with all the polishing and chroming and the motor stuff. His plates just work really well with everything, you know, with the whole engine. A lot of people sort of think, oh, it's a bit extravagant doing the bill of plates, but because, uh, you know, like yourself, I know what this realistically costs. And to do a, a factory Mazda engine now, it's, if you're going to do it, do it properly. Well, that's the way we worked it out, Luke. Yeah. You know, when I went to Simon, I, I had a chat to him and we worked it out. He goes to me, look, by the time you buy a, a 20B engine, you know, it comes from Japan, you're, pay, you're paying what, 12, 15 grand, say for example. By the time you strip it, if the housing, you, no you don't know what's going on inside. Yeah. So by the time you pull it apart and you find out this is going to get changed, this is going to get changed, you, you might as well just, you know what, start fresh, do it, spend a little couple bucks extra and it's done. And you know yourself that the whole engine's brand new. And So the 13B, tell us a little bit about that. You said it had a T, T4 yeah, yeah. But when I remember when I saw it, at, uh, we, we saw it at Ballarat Drags and it was... Um, 42 roller. That was I had a, a GT 42 roller. 42 roller. Yeah. So that was the first time I actually raced the car ever. First time I took it out. I've, ne I've never actually taken this car down the quarter mile ever. Yeah, yeah. So I put the 42 roller on it. And at that time, I just got it running with tunes that we made 600 horsepower yeah. on 25 pound on the A85. Okay. And I got this mad bu bug and I go, so I'm, you know what, Ballarat side, I'm going racing. The boys are going all from the area, let's go racing. So I took it out. Look, the setup was, the, the motor itself was about built 10 years ago, 11 years ago. So I gave it a bit too much of a stick and um, I think I've done some damage to the apex seals and had some fun, two good runs. You know, it was good, good Maz, fun. Maz the life. Maz the life. And then I pulled it off the road then and he goes, to him, look, what do you want to do? And I said to him, listen, oh, what's the option? What can we do? He goes, you going to go 13B billet. Do you want to change something? Do you want to just rebuild this? I said, give me a couple of days to think about it. Calling back two days later, I said, let's make that 20B happen, mate, put it in. So yeah, they got it done pretty quick. I followed the build of this a little bit as it came together and um, it, did, it did come together pretty quick. Uh, you've got Billet Pro plates front to back. Now we actually filmed this on the dyno, but for the life of me, mate, I cannot remember what power it made. It made 792 horses okay. on 21 or 22 pound or 23, something like that. That's like no boost. Yeah, very yeah, very low boost for, for what it is. Yeah, for what it is. You know, uh, for, and, for what it is. And in this sort of configuration, it. it'll do it all day long. Correct, yeah. And you know what? These days, if I ever want to race it, I didn't build a car for the race, first of all. I built the car just to enjoy it on the street, jump in, go for a cruise with the boys and just enjoy the car for the street. So I, look, if I ever did want to race it, I know that I got the components there. If I ever wanted to go out, give it a squirt, put it up to 40 pound, you know, try crack a good number. And so I got the best of both worlds if I ever wanted to choose to do it. side of it you've got one of the new new generation fuel techs haven't you newish i'd say look i i, I had the fuel tech in the 13b setup uh, i had i got the ft 500 yep. i think there's the newer ones with all the digital dashes but i've had these these gauges and all that stuff in the car for a while and i because they all work yeah i, I didn't really need the, need the dash, the yeah. dash part so i thought you know what i've already got these gauges that work so i just went the f5 ft 500 and it works well and the moving on to the rest of the drive line, what is that a turbo 400 you've got there or something? Yeah, else? GZM, uh, Gozza and the boys the GZM built that. It's a turbo 400, uh, trans brake. I've got the bump box and all that set up for it as well. Very good. Like I, honestly, I've since I put the auto in, I, 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 it's been the best street car. Well, I don't know. For me, autos behind two rotors just don't sound right. They, they, they kind of lose their what makes them a rotary. The rotary, yeah, rotary that's sound. true. That is, put, they're very true. You put them 100%. in a three rotor and they, they just purr, don't they? They still got it. Yeah. They still got that, you know. 
bop, 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 while you're driving. The Pulse. The Pulse. Man, what size wheels are these, mate? I've got 19s on it, 265s. Decent um, dish on them. I'll put, yeah, I've shortened the diff. Look, I, I haven't tubbed the car. Oh, you I haven't just, tubbed the diff? I haven't tubbed it. I just shortened the diff as far as we could go. Yeah, we put a four link in it. To be quite honest with you, man, it grips up pretty well. Even on the 19s on these stickies, it, it actually grips up and goes very, very well. What does it rev at, like at 100 k's? What, what diff gears have you got? I've got four, five, sixes. And um, I'm running right now at 90 k's, I'm doing three, 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 four. Yeah. The paint itself, is, is it candy apple red or is it something it's else? It's actually, the paint is candy brandy wine. Yeah. So about six years ago, when we decided to paint it, I called up Billy and I said, Billy from Rajab Customs, I said, Billy, I, want, I just want to give it a quick blow over because I want to get on the road. Because yeah. this, this was like October. I said, I just want to give it a quick rub, paint it and get it back on the road as we all want to get the car going for summer. I went there and he goes, listen, I've got a few colors I want to show you. And he, this was like a new color back then when it came out. Show me the color. I said, you know what, we've got to do this. Yeah. So, and I've, I've, to be honest with you, I'm really happy with the color. I've seen it in the uh, sun and she just pops, yeah? Yeah, it changes actually, mm. like completely. Like you look at it in, in indoors, it's one color. You look at it in the sun, it's a different color. It's a beautiful color. I'm, I'm really happy with the choice of the color. And the interior, geez, you've... Uh... The interior, believe it or not, well, it's been, I think, 13 years I've had those seats. Have so, you ever had an adult, adult in the back? <laughs> <laughs> not too much leg room in there. Not much leg room at all, mate. But as I say, you don't buy, you don't buy a two-door for other people. A few years ago, we just got the all the dash components done and all yeah. the push-button starts. And I don't reckon anyone does rotaries as good as Australia. Yeah, I don't reckon either, to be honest with you. I think, you know what I think mainly is because we actually enjoy our cars. Like I've traveled and I've done a lot of the world and even just going to Puerto Rico and America, maybe the States. But there's not as much. With the rotaries. Like, um, I haven't really seen lot, too much. A lot of, like, especially in New Zealand, there's so many rotary conversions. In, in America, there's a, lot not of many. Are, a lot of them are RX7s. Correct. Uh, or they're in Datsuns. Correct, yeah, you're 100% right. Those starlets, which we never got here. You build them to drive them, I guess, eh? Hey? No point looking at them. Well, Dunch, I just want to thank you for a fantastic day out in the uh, the 20B Beast. Thank you too, Luke. Yeah. It's been an awesome day, mate. Appreciate your time. And I don't think there's anything else you could do to make this car better. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty content with it, man. It's been good. I'm um, I'm happy with the way everything's fallen into place. And for the street, it's been good. And it is good. And yeah, yeah. I'm wrapped, man. All right. Thank you. this shot because it's it's very lot it's how, real how you use the car isn't yeah it? it's exactly how i use the car yeah and it's in my area 